I'm Josh Busby, an assistant professor at the University of Texas at the LBJ School of Public Affairs and also a fellow in the Strauss Center for International Security and Law. This uh, report on mapping climate security in North Africa is part of a larger project aimed to identify the most vulnerable areas across the entire continent of Africa. And for the purposes of this study, we selected the 14 countries in North Africa broadly defined uh, from the Mediterranean down to the Sahel across to the Horn. So what we tried to do is to develop uh, a composite portrait of overall vulnerability to climate change in uh, Africa and in the purposes of this paper in North Africa in particular. And the starting intuition is that physical exposure to climate hazards alone isn't enough to explain overall vulnerability. Some countries, based on governance, are going to be more vulnerable to the adverse consequences of extreme storms, droughts, and floods just because their governments may lack the willingness or ability to protect their citizens. Countries where citizens are poorer, less well-educated, less healthy, and have fewer access to services are also going to be more vulnerable than countries where people have higher living standards. So we've tried to capture that in our methods. And we do that through a series of maps using geographic information systems, which is simply a way of visualizing data uh, spatially. And we do that through four main processes. Our first dimension of vulnerability is based on physical exposure to climate-related hazards. Those are largely historical exposure to droughts, fires, floods, cyclones, as well as a dimension of low elevation coastal zone exposure. And what we find is that the countries along the Mediterranean, in particular, are among the most exposed to these climate-related hazards, as well as southern Sudan and western Ethiopia. So it, within the region, you see countries along the Mediterranean, Morocco, uh, Algeria, and Tunisia, among the most exposed to these climate hazards, as well as southern Sudan and western Ethiopia. The second dimension of our uh, vulnerability maps is population density. And the intuition behind including this basket, as we call it, is that policymakers will care about where there are large concentrations of people and where that overlaps with climate exposure. So all else equal, we're going to be more preoccupied uh, about where there are the largest concentrations of people. And what we find is that the largest population densities are concentrated along the Mediterranean in Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia along the coast, as well as Egypt along the Nile, Sudan, central Sudan near Khartoum, as well as western Ethiopia. So there, to a certain extent, there's overlap uh, in our maps of climate exposure, uh, physical climate exposure, as well as population density. The third dimension of our maps are based on household and community resilience. And the intuition here is that the, the first line of defense of communities against climate-related hazards like droughts, fires, and floods is the level of community and household resilience. Communities are really the first line of defense against these climate-related hazards. And whether or not communities are healthy, well-educated, and have access to services really will influence whether or not large numbers of people suffer and die in the event of these extreme weather events. So what we find when we look at levels of household and community resilience across North Africa, well, first, the data is, it generally is not very good. But what we do find is that countries along the Mediterranean, particularly uh, Tunisia, northern Algeria, Libya, and Egypt, and to a lesser extent, Morocco, are uh, much better uh, off in terms of uh, their community resilience as compared to countries in the Sahel, uh, uh, such as Mali, Niger, and Chad, as well as countries on the Horn, including Ethiopia and Somalia. So the overall resilience of communities uh, reduces the level of uh, vulnerability of countries in the Mediterranean and increases the vulnerability in countries in the Sahel and the Horn of Africa. Our last dimension of vulnerability is governance and political violence. And what that takes into account is many 
instances, the effects of extreme weather events will often surpass the capacities of local communities to protect themselves. And when that occurs, whether or not large numbers of people suffer and die will ultimately uh, be determined by how good their governments are in terms of effectiveness, openness to uh, the concerns of the community. And we try to capture that through measures of government effectiveness, voice and accountability, integration in the global system, and measures of political stability, as well as subnational indicators of political violence. And so the maps that we've generated here demonstrate again, like household and community resilience, that countries along the Mediterranean, uh, particularly Morocco, Tunisia, and to a lesser extent, Egypt, look much less vulnerable when we bring in this dimension of governance and political violence. They're more able, uh, compared to other countries in the region and the continent, to protect themselves from these physical effects of climate-related hazards. Whereas countries in the Sahel, particularly Niger, Chad, across uh, to the Horn, Somalia, Ethiopia, and, and including uh, Sudan, are much, look much more vulnerable when we bring in governance and political violence. So what we really wanted to do with this project is try to identify the most vulnerable places so that policymakers both uh, from Africa and those uh, outside Africa who care about the continent can prioritize resources to the areas of highest concern. So we hope that this effort will help governments figure out uh, if they haven't already, in make, many cases they have, how to prioritize resources, where are the subnational regions of greatest concern for them, but also how the donor community who's increasingly being asked to do support for adaptation, where they should concentrate their resources.